everyone. Thank you for tuning in to this month's episode of Pegasus. I am Dr. Brittany Warren Henderson, Community Outreach Veterinarian here at Mississippi State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. Each month, I will provide information about events within the college, within the profession, and within the careers of our alumni, faculty, staff, and students, while also providing some important tips on how to care for your four-legged companions, both large and small. And joining me again this week is Dr. Jim Brett, Associate Clinical Professor in the Department of Pathobiology and Population Medicine here at the College of Veterinary Medicine. Thank you for joining me again, Dr. Brett. Thank you for having me again. So just a recap of last month's episode, we began discussing how to maintain a good health status within our livestock herd. We talked about um, the different cornerstone, uh, historical cornerstones of um, livestock health, such as vaccinations and um, deworming protocols. We also talked about the different issues in which um, may cause, uh, may affect the success of our loss of herd, such as concurrent diseases, stress, and environmental hygiene, just to name a few. And then we left off with you giving us uh, an idea of what a good protocol may look like for vaccines and dewormers. So talking about vaccine and dewormers again this week, this month, what precautions should be taken when um, handling vaccines and dewormers? Well, like with any agent, you must take care with it. And, and, and I, first thing I would advise our viewers to do is get involved with your, your Cattlemen's Association. Uh, go contact your county agent and look at getting certified through the Beef Quality Assurance Program. They have some excellent guidelines on how to properly handle and administer our vaccines to make sure we're doing them properly. Using the, the right product at the right time is critical. And by doing these things that the guidelines show us, again, will help ensure success. So if you're looking at products that we're looking at having success with, if we mix them properly, if we handle them properly, if we administer them properly, at the right time, we're more likely to succeed with, with our products. So when we're looking at, say, reproductive diseases in our cattle and livestock, so it'd be good to vaccinate prior to breeding. We know we have clostridial diseases like black leg, most commonly post weaning. So vaccinating those and boostering before weaning are very important. Recognizing the time we have the product and trying to get the immunity built up before that time. Also, we need to watch some products and things that look at more for the adverse reaction for, for our, our livestock. We know that there are multiple va uh, vaccines that have bacteria that are gram negative bacteria. Things like brucellosis, leptospirosis, vibrio, pink eye, Manheimia, Pastrella, number of them that we use commonly. They not only have these gram negative vaccines in them, but they also are carrying a substance called endotoxin. Endotoxin is a substance that can be released by these bacteria, especially when they die, and they can cause some severe adverse reactions to our livestock. In fact, giving too many will actually create a clinical problem that very mimics uh, respiratory disease, especially in young cattle. And if we do have an adverse reaction, it's always important. Contact your, your veterinarian, the, the individual you bought your vaccine from, so they can contact the, the, the pharmaceutical company that made it. They, they monitor these very closely to make sure there's not anything in the vaccine that would cause a, an undue health to our animals as we administer them. Okay, and so lastly, Dr. Brett, what are the keys to managing a healthy, productive livestock herd? Well, there's, there are many keys that we need to look at, and you have to start with the very basic. Everything to me starts with nutrition. Uh, having a balanced diet for those animals that meet the protein and energy needs along with the major and minor medical mer uh, minerals that support that immune system. And these requirements change throughout that production cycle. The animal that is pregnant but non-lactating before calving doesn't have the nutritional needs of after she calves and now she's producing, producing milk for that offspring. So we need to make sure we're producing that, giving that nutrition so it's not causing undue pull on the body to pull in reserves, which is going to uh, lower our immune status and make us more susceptible to diseases. Easy way to do this is doing body condition scoring. You can look at animals and we can say how well these programs are working by looking at the condition of their body. If they're in a good healthy status, then they're nice and slick, they're, they're, bone, they're not skinny, we don't see bones protruding on them, or and also we don't want the obvious obese animal either because that's not healthy it, it also. Stressors we know about can, can suppress our immune system, so looking at things like modifying your working facilities. So you have, they move slowly and easily through there through the system so you can process them in, a, in an organized manner, again, not causing undue stress to them. Also looking at things like low stress handling, low stress winning process, again, 
because when we look at doing those things, we're also trying to vaccinate. And when we stress those animals and have a negative effect on immunity, they're not going to respond to our vaccines as well. Parasite control is, is very important. And the only way you know that a deworming, dewormer program is working is you've got to be able to monitor it. People ask me all the time, what dewormer do I use? I said, I don't know because I don't know what you've been doing and I know, don't know what your worms are successful to. So if you'll take a sample when you deworm, take another sample about two and a half weeks later and look at how you've reduced the egg burden in those animals, that's a good indication that, that your product is working. And that is the only way that I know how that you can justify that use and know that product is working. In those calves, claustral management we talked about day one, making sure they've got that first milk in them in, in, in a timely manner to get their immune status up. And really important is what's what you bring into your farms, quarantine facilities, biosecurity practices to keep those animals away so they don't transmit disease is very important. And then look at a customized vaccine program. A lot right. of things to look at, but it takes a lot to keep our livestock healthy. All right, well, thank you, Dr. Brett. We'll take a break and be back with more in just a moment. Flight, it's driven mankind's dreams for centuries. The ability to soar above the earth, to travel to faraway places, to connect distant points. Manned flights to the moon and space were once the stars for which we reached. Now, unmanned aircraft are the future. At Mississippi State University, our teams are developing unmatched unmanned aircraft systems for an array of critical applications. We're so good at it, the Federal Aviation Administration named MSU a center of excellence in the field, asking us to lead the team that's creating the operating regulations for unmanned aircraft systems worldwide. So essentially, we're writing the flight plan for an industry that is the future. Our work means better information, more opportunity, and limitless horizons for you. The sky really is the only limit. A baby's arrival can be one of the most exciting times in a family's life. It can also be one of the most anxious, especially if the child's development is hindered by medical challenges that create more questions than answers. At Mississippi State University, we're groundbreakers in the study of CHARGE syndrome, a genetic condition that leads to a host of life-threatening birth defects. Our research teams are uncovering breakthroughs in treatment and prevention with a goal of greater understanding that leads to better care. We're also providing crucial support resources for parents and helping physicians around the globe gain awareness so symptoms can be detected and addressed earlier. By engaging in this innovative analysis and therapy, we're not only improving outcomes, we're unlocking brighter futures. Welcome back everyone. Has your dog been having some diarrhea that hasn't been resolving? Are you tired of cleaning up behind your dog? Well, joining me today is Dr. Alyssa Sullivan, Assistant Research Professor in the Department of Clinical Science here at the College of Veterinary Medicine. And today she will be discussing about our new study um, that will provide some information that may be of its assistance to you. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Sullivan. Thank you for having me. Well, today, Dr. Sullivan, can you tell us a little bit about your chronic diarrhea study? Certainly. So chronic diarrhea is, is a very common and, as you can imagine, very frustrating condition for dogs. Uh, so we're excited to, to discuss a research project that's been going on in the college between myself, uh, with myself, and three other clinicians here. And chronic diarrhea has numerous causes and many treatments, many testing options, and can ultimately be very costly to owners, particularly if those dogs need to go on to uh, referral level care or have expensive diagnostics or treatments done, such as endoscopic or even surgical biopsies to figure out the answer. So in cooperation with our local practitioners, we developed some cost-effective, practical, affordable, yet effective protocols that the practitioner can use easily uh, in practice to address these chronic diarrhea cases. And throughout the study, what we're trying to see is if these protocols that are cost-effective and easy to use in practice are actually beneficial and can they cure most dogs with chronic diarrhea. Okay. So if we have some viewers out there that dog may have some diarrhea, how can they get enrolled in this study? That's a great question. It's actually very easy. So 
the first thing you would do is go to your regular veterinarian, whether that's one in town or here at the vet school. And at that point, you would just take the pet to your veterinarian and talk, tell them what's going on and mention the chronic diarrhea study. At that point, the veterinarian can simply contact myself or one of the other three clinicians on the study and talk to us about the animal and see if it qualifies for enrollment. And if the pet does qualify for enrollment, we will work over the next at least six weeks with that veterinarian on a weekly basis following up with that patient and give them protocols to use once weekly for the diarrhea. And again, we follow up once weekly, and if the diarrhea is not resolved with the first set of treatments, we move to week two. And once the patient has actually not had diarrhea for at least six weeks, we will call that patient cured. Now, at the end of these protocols that we've developed, if the diarrhea is still not controlled or cured, then those pets will qualify for enrollment into what we call the second phase of therapy, where they'll actually be referred to our teaching hospital for advanced level diagnostics and treatment. Okay. Well, where can uh, our clients find out about more information about this study? There's lots of information on our CVM website. It's www.cvm.msstate.edu. And there is a dedicated section to the chronic diarrhea study there where owners and practitioners both can find information about the treatment protocols, who to contact, phone numbers, and even videos demonstrating some of the procedures we will use or recommend. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me today, Dr. Sullivan. Absolutely, my pleasure. All right, and I would like to take this time to thank Dr. Brett for also joining us today, and I would like to also thank you for tuning in as well. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about today's show, you can email me at brittany.henderson at msstate.edu. I look forward to hearing from you and seeing you next time here on Pegasus.